you weren't really supposed to be out, you know. But I thought, well, if the police stop me, I'll just say I'm, you know, just coming back from a walling job. <laughs> Uh, lockdown was incredibly difficult. I mean, the first thing for me, of course, if you street entertain, as you know from the previous documentary, you know, living on the shoestring, that was a lot of part of my income. And uh, I, I said, I mentioned in that, that I would only uh, sometimes have to do dry stone warning, but that's usually the recording money, right? <laughs> and uh, anyway, so suddenly what happened was I couldn't play on the street anymore. And um, luckily, because I had some dry stone walling work that came up, it happened to be that um, quite a lot of walling came up. And sure enough, yeah, it was out in the middle of nowhere. And it was really strange because there were no vapor trails in the sky. There was no planes in the sky. The birds could hear themselves twitter for once. Um, and of course, I had the sheep and all that around me at that time. And there was hardly anything on the road, and that was strange as well, you know, because I was driving sort of 17 miles to work and back each day. And um, anyway, so w what happened was, I mean, I was, you know, then you go shopping, and and um, everyone didn't know like, well, who's got the killer disease or something, you know, standing apart. And you did, not everyone had to wear masks in the beginning, so there were some people like who had masks, and um, you know, some people's masks were like, you'd think they were going into some sort of riot area, you know? I mean, it was really weird, like, sort of surreal war, but not a war. And um, so, yeah, and I was thinking, God, this is chaotic. Do you know what I mean? And um, so that's what kind of started me thinking. I was driving back and, of course, part, you know, a part of my drive is on a place called Minchin Hampton Common. And of course, you've got, you've got the Brinscombe Valley, where I have to go down into, you know, to get to back to where I was living in the van. And uh, then I went to a place called Coley Peak. And I thought, yeah, looking down at the valley below, and there's all that chaos going on, you know, and complication, and no traffic, and things like that. And you think, my God, this is a really strange era that we're living in, you know. So, anyway, so that's what inspired it. And so then what happened was, I mean, I had a few little things that happened was, um, I did this war for a guy called Prof Bar. It turns out that he created or invented this idea of a laser that would go down your, your neck, yeah, and it will identify cancer and it will zap it. And I thought, well, that's amazing, you know, because I had an operation on my neck as well. And he looked at it and said, oh yeah, that, that, I recognise it, you know, the scar here or whatever it was. Lovely chap to talk to and um, what a clever thing to do because you don't have to have invasive surgery then on the neck, which makes it a lot better. And of course, anyone can get throat cancer, even if you don't smoke, you can get throat cancer. And um, so I thought, well, it turns out that he's got a foundation trust with the NHS Gloucestershire. And also I was talking to him about it and him and his wife Judy, very nice to talk to, um, said that they were looking, they had to find venture capitalists to put up the money to make these things. So I thought, well, hang on a minute, well, why can't I use this song? You know, it's, I mean, for every, but to, 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 to make lasers, you know, raise money, make lasers, you know, just, I mean, it's easy enough. You only have to give a pound, a quid, but it's nothing. Do you know what I mean? But I know, if, as, my, as you know, you know, my experience on the street, then pounds that up. <laughs> Jules came up with uh, his friend Tim to do some dry stone walling with us. He's a very talented <laughs> artisan, as well as a brilliant artist. And we got on famously together he was particularly interested in, you know, what I was doing with scientific research. And I, we used to stop and have lunch together while he was doing the walling and uh, all his artistic things. And 
He was telling me about his music and I listened to some of it and it's absolutely outstanding. Uh, and uh, he was very interested in the scientific research because I'm an esophageal gastric surgeon and was interested in early detection of disease and he wanted to know what we were doing and how we were doing it and how we were using right light Raman spectroscopy to interrogate tissue so we could uh, get a diagnosis. He also had friends and people who were a little ill and so we spent a lot of time talking about illness and disease and then about his life as well. So anyway, so that's what inspired it. And so then what happened was, I mean, I had a few little things that happened was, um, you know, I recorded it on my little micro BR. You know, it's batteries in that van, that's all I've got really to record it on. But I did it differently this time. I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to, I had a rough idea of the rhythm. It's got a little beatbox thing. It's like a little studio, that thing. Anyway, so I completed the whole arrangement of the track. And I had the horn part, you know. Um, now, I didn't put that down on it, on that recording, but I, it was there in my mind, and I knew what the harmony was going to be as well, so I had that worked out. Uh, then I thought, I'll ring up Jane Kettaway. She, she'll give me a hand with the song, and she, you know, me and Jane have worked together. I've worked on her stuff, you know, um, different kind of honey is her band. And I've worked with her, and she's a good songwriter too. And um, she's really good on harmony, and um, she's also good on production, you know. So I got hold of her. We'll rock the nation, but I think we'll keep engaged the nation. No, I like it? engage. Yep. Um, a world divided in two. I met Jane uh, some years ago. She had a band called Different Kind of Honey, because she's a brilliant songwriter, as well as a great singer. And um, it's called A Different Kind of Honey. And she wanted me in to do the horn section. Brilliant. She just told me what to play and made me sound like James Brown. <laughs> I never, never sounded like James Brown horn section before. <laughs> You'd think being a saxist, you know, I'd know what to play, wouldn't you? But I'll tell you what, the wonderful thing about vocalists is, good ones anyway, and she's sung in jazz bands and stuff, they know what notes for you to sing to make the chords, you know? So she's brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to hearing her sing today. Right, so it's the same note <coughs> yeah. on the second and third. The first time it's, you can put the world back together again, right? That's the first, after the <coughs> first verse. After the second verse, right, because it goes on about the world cooperation, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, it then goes, I I'm know. seeing a lot of that lately. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, we live in hope. I know, and you know, she knows, and we know. We can put the world back together again. So it's, we can put the world back together. Right. Well, have you got the lyrics, I hope, for me? Yes. Sitting at the top of the hill Looking at the valley below Sitting here in isolation Away from all the chaos and complication And then I was trying to get out of a bass player and, um, oh no, the drummer I thought, you know, I'll get my old mate, Nigel Harris, you know, because we found, founded Pendragon with Nick Barrett and Stan Cox years ago. And um, I thought I'd get hold of him and drag him out. It would be something that we could do together. We haven't worked together for years, me and Nigel yeah, Harris. Again. It's quite regimented then. Okay. We can put. Oh, it's quite regimented. What does that mean? <laughs> put. Well, there's no. There's no kind of like. Emphasis in the in the pushing the beat or hanging the beat back. Yeah, or anything. It's, da, 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 it's da, da, still da. it's still art. It might yeah. be pop music yeah, to you, it's but it's still art. You know? One, two, three, right but, uh, so I had myself a drummer. Then the bass player I was a bit stuck yeah, with, and then I phoned up um, Nick Barrett and asked him about PG. Do you think you know? Could, do you think he, he'd do it? If, you know, could I ask him to do it? I didn't have his number, you see. Well, not his mobile number, and he's very difficult to get a hold of on his home number. He never answers it at all. So anyway, so I got PG. Wow, he answered the phone. I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, I'm on the way <laughs> with this song. You know what I mean? When things happen like that, yeah. And so they now had a bass player. Love it, big well done. That's And of course, I had to, in, in Butsu, you've got the keyboard player, 
co-producing as well. Do you see what I mean? So I've got me, Jane, and um, Betsy co-producing. And Nigel, I mean, how do you drum like that when you don't even own a set of drums? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even play for years anyway. And he plays like that, you know. You know, yeah, I was, I'm really confident when I walked in that studio, you know. Uh, you know, I'm a music man. Do you know what I mean? I play a saxophone, I song right, I play the guitar. And then he walks in and does that. No, none of them had listened to the tracks. That was another thing. So I literally go in, pre them, yeah. That's the other thing they heard the track. So we used the micro BR track, and I did a separate guitar track for that, which is used on the, uh, on the uh, track itself, yeah? And so everybody never heard it. Now, Nigel was gonna drum along to it, first time he heard it. PG was gonna put a bass on it, the first time he heard it. James was gonna sing over it, the first time she ever heard it. And of course, Bet's playing his keyboards. But well, he's used to that with me. But, you know, maybe Pete G and Nige, I mean, Nigel was very concerned. He was a bit of a worry about Nigel Harrison. Well, surely we can hear it, can't we? I said, no. I said, when I did, did a track for Nick Barrett off of his new album, um, Love Over Fear, I went to a studio and he wouldn't let me hear it. <laughs> so I thought, if he could do that to me, I'll try it with you. <laughs> Life will never be the same. So, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, Miles Davis used to do that to all his musicians, but he picked the right musicians. And I think it worked out really good because it's got that vibe, it's spontaneous. It's got that sort of spontaneity vibe, you know, it's a bit improvised as well. I mean, there's a lot of improvisation to Jane. She altered the, the lines and that, singing lines. And so the whole thing's such a joyous thing to do. And if it does raise millions and provides more lasers for people to have this kind of diagnosis and treatment, yeah, then I think that's a fantastic thing. Think of all the vocalists who may, you know, suffer from throat cancer. I'm sure they'll be thinking about giving some money, I'm sure. I think when you write big, write songs, or you are a songwriter, you're always looking for new material. And I haven't written that many songs, political, do you know what I mean? And I, probably people wouldn't want to hear them anyway. But um, I, I'm always looking for new subjects and topics. So t to write about, you know, this, what was happening at that time, when there was a lockdown, for me was just a wonderful response to what was happening at the time. And I think just like we'll film or just like a photograph, I think we captured it very well in the song and I hope people, you know, like the song. <laughs> like the song, give us a quid, like the song, give us a quid, you know. <laughs> we'll see. that which is brilliant well I guess which is what you've recorded mm -hmm. <laughs> oh it's exciting <laughs>you want me to play again? Or, um, is that a, or am I done? One more time. Oh, one more time. I've got to yeah. go through the, the agony, <laughs> <laughs> the pressure. <laughs>